Grand Rising, Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Give me one second, everyone. Let me let everyone get some time to get in. You'll mute yourself, please. Thank you. Until we're ready. Good <coughs> deal. Okay. It's almost 11 11 and we will be ready <clears throat> mr Nora, if you'll mute yourself until we're ready to start
Okay. Excuse me, Nora. Excuse me. Ball. Yes. You got a ball. Okay. Oh, squishy. Okay, we're still letting people in. One second, Lou Ross about to have a fit because he's not gonna wanna have to move around. Okay. Got it? Okay, now really quick before we start, I know um, some of you may have gotten the, um, we actually, I actually thought it was Teen Sunday this Sunday, so we were preparing for it to be Teen Sunday. Um, it, it is not the third Sunday. And so we sort of messed that one up. So next week is Teen Sunday. If y'all have any teens that you all know who um, parents would allow for them to sort of be involved in this sort of platform, just so they can just sort of have a moment to themselves to release, sort of talk about some things that are bothering them. Um, Leilani is our um, teen SOS facilitator in um, next week, they will be doing a live cooking demonstration class with Plant Chicks, Miss um, Shafika Smiles. Of course, we know she's a vegan chef, um, amazing. And what she's going to do is utilize um, utilize things that you just have around in your kitchen that are sort of to prepare a meal. Um, we will send out the email that will have a list of things that you can use that is strictly for the teens uh we thought about trying to do it like a mom and teen participation thing and they totally opted out of it i think they're um, needing to sort of deal with their own quarantine concerns or whatever for their healing circle or whatnot so that won't happen um this week in the sense of um that and so Anyhow, so it, it only felt necessary to um, get on here this, you know, today and just sort of just have a vibe out session. I didn't really um, push this a lot. Let me just say that um, everyone who's here is supposed to be here, but I definitely wanted to make sure, um, make sure that we had um, a moment um, considering how the energy just has been going around people starting to feel a little overwhelmed um, people starting to feel a little frustrated um, my suggestion to everyone is to you know check on your tribe um, make sure that you check in on your people you know just to see how they're feeling where they're at you know um, whatever however have you not uh, da -da 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 -da, what am I leaving out um, before we start Oh, okay. So let me tell you about last week. Okay. So last week was really, really good. Um, it was, I haven't sent the email out with all of the information and partly because, um, I was waiting on everyone to send me their information. And then when they finally did send it over, it was sort of late, um, in the week for me. And so, um, I had already had other things that I needed to tackle, especially once I realized that I had accidentally, um, had the dates mixed up for a team sold out Sunday. And so really quick, really quick while, while y'all are um, just on here, you are going to need some kind of canvas. Um, hold on one second. Chase, bring my computer charger, please. I'm sorry. You are going to need some kind of canvas. Um, you can use markers, um, map colors today. You can use, um, Anything that has to do with colors, paint, I have paint, I've chosen my, you only need three colors. It's not going to be where you have, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight colors, only three colors. I've done this before at um, Sold Out Sunday. I started doing these at my retreats um, years ago. And so um, three colors three colors don't try to cheat you know um, Chantel can you put the instructions 
inside of the chat because everybody I always try to cheat um, and choose more than one color or whatever. Three colors, a canvas. You can use, um, plug it up, babe. Let me, have the, let me have the piece that matters. You can use um, construction paper. You can use white paper. You can use anything that you can um, draw on or, you know, whatever. We just need um, something that you can put it on and three colors. If you have, um, Mendice, I know you are a, um, an artist. I'm gonna need for you to only have three brushes if you're gonna use, if you're gonna paint and actually do the painting part versus the um, colors, you only have three brushes that you can use. Are we clear? Um, Chantel, did you, let me see. Did you put that in the chat for me? Yep, I did. Okay. Okay, cool beans. Three colors, canvas, some kind of sheet of paper or something that you can actually put whatever on. Um, of course, you know, you need your, um, I'm going to suggest for you guys to have um, headphones. Today, um, we have Kay Woods online. Kay Woods is, um, is his, she, she just Kay Woods. Anyhow, she's the songstress for today. Last time that we did this at Sold Out Sunday at Pan African, we had um, someone to come in and do it live. And so she is going to sing a couple of songs for us. Good morning, Miss Woods. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> do you have your picture? Can we see your face? Or are you, um, are you hiding? Yeah. Uh oh, sound like she had. Okay, so um, we we want to we want to see you when you start though. Maybe she's still getting prepared. So she's just gonna sort of vibe out. Vibe, we're just gonna sort of vibe out with some of some things that um, have been definitely um, you know with a couple of songs to just sort of help us. Okay, there she is. Just sort of help us. Um, just sort of vibe in the moment. Um, we sort of took some time last night out trying to figure out what all songs we were gonna use. You you good on you good on the songs, Woods? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so um that's the first part, but let's start opening up the group, the group conversation. Uh, we I was on a call yesterday in or uh, no Friday, and it was a really, 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 really long call. Um and we were on there with a couple of um, just like um, spiritual leaders, um, mostly pastors and um, and whatever have you not. And we were talking about the um, the need, the energy, or the need just for everyone to see where people were and people were showing up in the sense of what's going on and how um, how people were dealing with that. Uh, how are you all feeling? in the sense of this quarantine i know mandisa this is this is easy i mean painting is like one of your it's your therapy um it's very relaxing how have you been feeling mandisa um during this quarantine time um honestly the quarantine time hasn't really affected me too much mm -hmm. kind of my life i stay to myself and uh -huh. i do everything i really just been trying to channel the energy creatively, I suppose, uh -huh. and just stay active. So I've been wrapping more crystals, writing more, and just trying to like play in a creative vibe more than anything. Okay, cool beans. Um, Rhonda, I know you're on and you're unmuted, so that must mean <laughs> that that you're next. How have you been feeling? I've been really good. Um, I've been connecting a lot, so I'm I'm really good. And any obstacles I've faced, I've been able to glide through them, so they haven't triggered me as much. Um, mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay. Um, Chantel, I know um, you are on the call uh, with me. How would you How would you sort of say the what have, What's been your feedback from from everything? Um, my feedback, it's been, actually, it's been really good. A lot of people have been, sorry, I'm trying to fix my light. 
Um, a lot of people have been, you know, reaching out just what I've noticed is people have just wanting to talk. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's what I've been getting just, and what also has ramped up is people checking in on other people, like just in random areas. I've just seen, Hey, how you feeling? How you doing? And what I think was good coming from there is that's not always done all the time in different circles. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I've been seeing. So it's been, that has been stepped up a lot and that's been really good. And that can be really appreciated, especially in a time like this. Um, you know, I think I said the other week, hey, just call and check in on your people. Just, you know, see how they're doing. You know, sometimes a random, just a random um, message or um, a random call would definitely help out a whole lot, you know, especially for people who may not, you know, feel like even before this, that they have that um, kind of connection with other people. Uh, we saw, we had a really good call yesterday uh, as far as FDSU and thinking about solutions um, just to make sure that we stay energetically where we need to be and purposeful. And, and so Chantel and I woke up yesterday morning and we woke up totally, you know, uh, Chantel was, our, was, 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 were you already in the ground, Chantel, outside? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, in the backyard. Yeah. Chantel is often in her backyard in um, in the mornings. Uh, she definitely connects a lot um, with nature, and um, I was. It was funny because I was getting ready to prepare to go outside. I wanted the boys to have breakfast, picnic style. Um, yesterday morning, let's just all go out to the front yard and let's have a picnic and eat. You know, our pancakes. Well, that didn't happen before the rain started. So um, Chantel and I, we we had we ended up on a call with another sister, and in hell, we all received something for ourselves. I mean, yes. really, we were outside sun gazing. I'm like this, like you know, let's let the sun come through your fingers, <laughs> and that is definitely um, some ways that we. Um, we can, you know, and if you, for you all that have, because a lot of us really aren't, um, a lot of us really don't have, you know, a, a, well, I'm not going to say a lot. Sometimes we're just used to what we, what we're used to that works. And right now I think it's being, we're being all called to level things up just a little bit. Um, Jay, mute yourself for me, um, love. Sorry. That's okay, baby. Uh, we're all sort of being called to just level ourselves up in the sense of what we can do to um, to stay where we need to, to to try or to stay in a really positive space. So that's one way. Um, stepping outside. Give me another one, Chantel. Stepping outside, putting your feet in the grass. Yeah, definitely. Stepping outside, putting your feet in the grass, uh, meditating. Feels so good. Medit just, just, just. Sitting in silence, and I was, and my thing is, if you have having moments of anxiety, don't go try to do no mirror work, please, and thank you, because a lot of times it'll, 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 um, it'll activate, and it'll, you know, make it bigger, make your issue, like, you're already trying to go through some stuff, I'm like, okay, I am one with myself, or whatever affirmations, and sometimes it can make it worse. So um, usually, if you get outside in nature, get some, if, if any of you guys live near a lake, I know uh, the governor has shut down the parks or whatever, but if you can like drive by, um, you know, listen to the water, uh, those things are very, very soothing, very relaxing, and very grounding at the same time. But son, you can take a bath. If, if I want some music, you know, um, some dance. Dancing um, is a good one. Though. Hey, some of y'all need to throw on some eggs, stallion, you know what I'm saying? You know, just get it. And just start moving because a lot of times, especially us as women, we get to shake those hips, moving your hips, that moves the energy as well. So those are just, you know, a few things you can do, like when you're having a moment that will kind of like snap you out really, really quick. We hold stress in our hips. A lot of women don't realize that we hold a lot of stress in our hips. And so, you know, it's very important. I don't know how everyone feels about yoga, um, but yoga can definitely help you move some of that that energy around um that's definitely i know seneca uh for those um who may not 
um, know who this, but he's a male. He did some yoga and fitness and meditation on yesterday. So even getting your children involved, this is something that we're all sort of totally new, unless you're sort of like, I'm like Mandisa. I, uh, I love being at home too. I, I really, I really do. I love my sacred space. Uh, but at the same time, it does not feel good when someone has pretty much told you like, you know, y'all gonna say y'all asses at home, you know, so that is sort of, of an adjustment uh, when you sort of just, you know, have been used to being able to freely um, move around. Um, let's see, Jay, give us one more, uh, give us a solution for being able to survive in this, in this time. Cooking, which is what I'm doing now. I'm tired of cooking. Shit. Oh, I like to eat. You, that's why yesterday, yesterday I said I'm a food bear. Uh -huh. I like to eat. <laughs> I, but um, I know that provides some relief. Some people do find cooking relaxing. Um, so definitely um, for some people that may um, work as well. Okay, let's get one more. Let's see who else. Anybody else want to give one more before I just ask specifically? It's a, oh, Sarah, you're on. Uh, Sarah, you want to give us a solution? Um, just to sort of thrive through this time? Does she hear us? She came off mute. Let me mute her back. Um, Angela, I just saw you jumped on. Angela likes to cook too. Um, you have a solution for us, Angela, that we can utilize at this time. Um, as far as what meal prep? Well, as far as more so just sort of, just to be able to just keep yourself in a, in a, in a positively energetic space. Um, I know meal prepping is your thing. That's definitely not mine. But, <laughs> um, um, what I do, I try to, um, more than anything, try to intake as much good information as possible. Because um, a lot of what we see and hear, even on social media, is um, a lot of negative. So when you see something negative you have to put some you have to put twice as much positive in it and um i just try to limit as much negative information uh because people send me stuff all the time in messenger or whatever and if it look like it might be something that's not positive and we know it's out here so i don't need a constant reminder of it so i will not read it or I won't listen to all of it and go find something else to do. Um, I make sure I do some positive meditation, some positive music, something to keep my mood lifted. I even like before I go to bed, I might watch something funny, to, some meaningless TV like Marlon on Netflix, um, something to boost my mood before I go to sleep. So whatever has gone on through the day is not the last thing that I think about before I go to sleep. I love Martin. Like that was and definitely watching something funny is, is beneficial, but I absolutely love Martin. That was like my shit back in the day. Um, Sarah, are you, thank you, Angela. That was You're welcome. I, I sort of left out the funny part. That's very important. Um, Sarah, are you back on real quick? You keep on muting, but we don't hear you. I'm back on. Can you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Um, okay, sorry. That's okay. Any solutions that you want to offer in the sense of where we are right now and that energy to sort of keep things sort of a little bit more controlled? And um, I put it in chat. Um, you guys made really good suggestions about meditating, cooking. I'm tired of cooking, too. If I'm at the point where now... My family, I think I'm on strike for a minute. It's like I'm cooking one meal, that's it. I can't, I can't, 
I'm tired of washing dishes and cleaning up the kitchen afterwards. My ankles are sore, okay? No, so la laughter, laughter. I would say now I am learning to keep it light um, because everything around us is heavy. So now I understand the, the word walk light has been really, really re reverberating off of me. Walk light, walk light, walk light. That's important too. Um, and, and not having, and not really having to really connect yourself to a lot of things that, that is heavy. So that's really important. So I'm practicing, I'm actively practicing non-attachment right now. I'm, I am so, I look at the thing before I decide whether I'm going to respond, um, mm -hmm. react. I am, I am really deciding whether I'm going, no, I'm not going to react to that today. I can't handle that. Mm -hmm. No. So No. I'm gonna go. I'm not. We're gonna act like that. I didn't even. I didn't even see it. That's real. Um, anybody else want to give one? Thank you, Sarah. I know in the chat, uh, Benicia Q. She said she found creating infused fine dining meals. I'm like, what? <laughs> so she's creating infused fine dining meals. They've helped her a lot. It's something new she's gotten into. She loves infused foods, writing, reading and self-checking. Uh, take a moment to check yourself and remember who you are. Definitely, um, especially right now. That's, that's yeah. the, um, taking a moment to check yourself and remember who you are. Uh, Q, uh, Q said yesterday when we were talking about who we, who we were, Q said she was smoking a bear. And so, <laughs> so for her to choose for her to say that she's enjoying her infused foods i'm like okay i can definitely understand that um if you guys uh, get a chance to cute put your um she doesn't really post her food but it's usually all throughout her stories um amazing chef she's um, done some stuff for us that sold out Sunday as well um, we have like three chefs inside of the group um in three different sides of purpose, her, um, Angela, and Zamora. So it's amazing to be around people who actually um, can cook um, because I don't like cooking, period. So um, I'm sorry, y'all. That's new, right? Uh, <laughs> Benicia. I think I'm on mute. Oh, Benicia, Tammy said you missed her. You on mute, though. Huh? Tammy said you missed her. Oh, uh, Tim, sure, you damn sure right, sis. And sis does, yeah. and sis does enjoy cooking. Can make a one second, y'all. Hold on one second. Oh, Nura. Oh, Nura. So, Nura, I'm coming to get home. <laughs> oh, she's gonna take the camera off. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> We're going to have to take turns rescuing our baby, Q. We're going to have to. Okay. We have to go I'm get him. I'm going to go pick him up. I'm going to go pick him up. He's three. He doing what three-year-olds do. Two-year-olds. <laughs> hey. Okay. <Little> thing. <laughs> we know. We, we was talking noise. <laughs> he definitely yeah, we're going to have to come rescue Nura. Please, somebody come <laughs> rescue me. <laughs> That's what somebody needs to come do is rescue me. Okay, so real quick in the sense of now, let me just say this in the sense of purpose and where I, you know, where I am and where things are. I think this is an amazing time to sit down and reflect on things that sort of line up to purpose and where you are and what you're being called to do. Um, I had, you know, one of the things that I said yesterday was, you know, for us to not be selfish and to only be involved within ourself right now in the sense of thinking about only what we need and knowing that many of us have been called to a higher purpose of living and for uh you know whether or not you are the chef or whether or not you are the uh, the person like Chantel, she said you know some people are just needing to talk whether or not you are the person who you know effectively listens and can give really great advice to talking a person down off of that ledge, whatever it is, let's not be so selfish in the moment um, right now to um, only think about ourselves and not show up where we are, are actually being needed right now. Uh, last week, um, no, this week, this past week, uh, we were in class and one of the young ladies got um, a message um, 
um, one of the young one of the young ladies got a message that um, her um, child's um, father wanted to uh, attempted to kill himself. So when you think about people in the sense who were already dealing with things that are really that were already really really heavy, and then something like this comes about. And the energy has just been so weird because, you know, I know, I think, you know, sort of like maybe our elders may have dealt with this during the, the, the yellow fever. I don't even know what time when it was when something spanned out like this before. But for many of us, we have not been able, we've not dealt with something like this. So this is totally new to us in the sense of what to do, how to do it, how to keep your uh, family safe um, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And so I think it's a really good time to sit and reflect and understand, you know, just what purpose is, how the things that have happened before in your life sort of leads up to your present and connects to your future self. And so for me, um, definitely, I'm a real big purpose pusher. Like, you know, that's like my thing and, and definitely um, lots of accountability. Um, so for me, I know this year has been um, totally different for me. I came into this year in a totally different type of space and a totally different type of requirement of myself and, and all of that. And so um, what has helped me now, let me just say for myself, what has helped me? Uh, one, um, I know people think, you know, may think this is, I don't, well, I don't care what you may think, but red lipstick. I absolutely fucking love red lipstick and it makes me feel really, 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 really good when I put red lipstick on. And so my red lipstick has been my, um, it's in, it, it's almost been like, you know, um, my kryptonite to, 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 to bullshit that's going around. So I absolutely have, um, love the connection of my red lipstick and, um, of being able to be closer to my higher self and um, my purpose in it all. Also, spiritual baths. When was the last time some of you actually connected um, to water and did some cleansing? Yesterday. Come on, Q. I needed that job. Well, I, I funny thing too. about those. What was you going to say, Shallon? I'm sorry. I, I got a funny thing about those. So last week, um, Dylan was gone like almost every day last week. And he came back Thursday just to leave again. And so um, like the residue of the um, the herbs was in the bathtub. And he was like, Mama, why you keep doing that? I said, doing what? He talking about you come in here and you take your seasoning baths <laughs> and you have your candles up. And you have your music going, but when I take a seasoning bath, you don't have candles up, you don't got no playlist going, you just make me get in there. I'm <laughs> like, you know what, baby, I'm going to make you, next time you take your seasoning bath, I'm going to make you the whole ambiance, so he wants like everything going for him. <laughs> it's so funny because he, he tells everybody it's a seasoning bath. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and it's the truth, and I love the fact that he calls it that. That's really cute, a seasoning bath. <laughs> And and I, uh, and I love the fact that you you know are definitely still remain consistent with giving him, you know his seasoning baths. Please, you all, let's understand that our babies need it too. Just as much energy as we are around, and how much stuff that we need to get off of us, they do too. And create them the whole ambience. I, I do it now. If the boys do it themselves, they not they're not going to do it. But if I do it and set it up for them, then I will put them a playlist. Uh, some candles and sort of set the mood um, be a little and being a, just a little bit more intentional of what I want to release um, that I've noticed from them or what you know giving them a space to be a little bit more intentional too now you can't always take a seasoning bath sometimes you just may have to get um, into the shower I do a lot of connection uh, within water um, a lot of the times that's where my clarity comes from um, or that's just where um, I start to to really connect with spirit and really get um, a divine message. So, you know, whether or not it be the shower or um, but definitely make sure that you're consistently doing your um, spiritual bath so that you can just sort of get some things up off of you. Um, also, my sisterhood. 
Um, in a sense of purpose right now, my sisterhood has been extremely important, um, extremely important because where I, where I am, you know, sort of lack on some things, they sort of, you know, pick up on it. Um, Angela has said her piece, Chant Chantel, um, definitely, um, Chantel's all, you know, usually pretty calm, you know, when her anxiety is up, you know, I can, I can tell, but Chantel is usually pretty calm, so she can always sort of, you know, walk you back. Um, Michi, um, uh, Michi, are you on here? I know, um, sometimes if I'm having a moment, I just have to call, you know, one of them who, you know, I know can sort of just help walk me back. Um, what else? Research in the sense of purpose. Research um, has been for me very, very, very important. I do a lot of research and um, reading in the sense of, of those things, trying to have a better understanding of what, what that means and what it means to me, how I can uh, most effectively live my life according to the things that I know that I'm you know, being called to do. So definitely um, a lot of research, a lot of magazine articles, a lot of, um, a lot of um, connection to people who are really, really doing something uh, wonderful. Um, I know I love Lisa Nichols. Lisa Nichols has been um, someone who I've been following for a, a really, really, really long time. And it's a lot that she says in all levels of um, understanding how my purpose connects on the spiritual side, but also in the business aspect. I absolutely love her. Um, Chantel, give me one more, because I know you. Um, uh, I like, I, uh -oh. okay. I, I like Ayama, Ayama Benzant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, Brene Brown is one of my faves too. Mm -hmm. uh, all about courage, courage and vulnerability. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about vulnerability a lot this week. Yeah, that's, she's huge on being vulnerable and being courageous. You know, it it says a lot. It means a lot. Um, you know, I've even downloaded um, a few classes to take on Udemy <laughs> somehow. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know where I'm gonna find time, but um, <laughs> those two, my son, two of the biggest hitters that you know for me, of course, Lisa Nichols. I mean, like you, I've been to her conference in California. I almost lost my mind. Mm. Best thing ever. But Ayala, really someone I just aspire. Uh, no, Oprah. I like Oprah. <laughs> um, <laughs> pick a day. I know. Mm. And Brene. Yeah, those are my, those are the top three for me. Um, another thing um, is that you have to love the things that you're connected to. Um, the reason why, you know, Q can be an amazing chef is because she, she loves to, she actually loves, she loves her craft. She loves her gift. And how many of you all actually know what your gifts are or how many of you all are actually connecting? A lot of the times we don't look at the things. Sometimes we can look at the things that we're healing from and only see the negative aspects of it, <clears throat> not truly understanding what it means when you're connecting to your now self, like how it all starts to connect. And then once you start to really understand that you can find appreciation and gratitude to some of the things that you were allowed to grow through that didn't take you out. It didn't, you know, it didn't kill you. You know, you're still here alive and present and you're able to, you know, just sort of flow in, in all of, even though I'm not going to say that the things don't hurt or the things, you know, you may still be working through. But when you sort of think about some things that you've had to experience, you can sort of connect them to your present and how it will start to connect purpose-wise. Uh, for me, definitely not being raised in a very affectionate family or, you know, home. My mother wasn't the hugger. She wasn't the one who um, did a lot of I love you's or any of that. And so um, I've been, um, I actually took with my, um, I took with my, um, with the students of FDSU, I took Chantel's class this, and I'm taking her class that's coming up, the nine-week course in addition to the class that I just came out of. 
Uh, and I started to understand that the little girl in understand more because I really thought I had gotten past some of those parts, but then, you know, really understanding now that I still had some things that I needed to work through. A lot of those things, you know, just coming from that little girl me um, were still um, co were connected to definitely what my purpose was. Um, I've really, I really had to really push past myself to become a little bit more affectionate just with my own children. Um, because for me, that felt very uncomfortable in the very beginning, you know, just to be able to hug my babies. And I knew that that wasn't something that just should have been that much of an issue. Um, but I, I didn't grow up in that sense. And so knowing all of those things and working through the healing aspects of that, you know, being touched as a young girl, um, all of those things, um, being told to be quiet, to, to hush my voice you know, or that you talk too much or the things that you think you all that to have to come back and now have to deal with um, that as an adult, you know, how does that look for me? How does that, how am I able to work through those things and still not have to deal with the, the backlash from within myself, not from anyone else at this point, you know, they said it enough. Now I'm dealing with it internally and trying to make the best of it as far as who I am now. And that's when I started to really connect to, to myself. Um, uh, many of you all who, who know my story know um, of my brother being murdered back in um, 2016 and then on the same day losing my friend. And all of it happened just like in this short time frame. And I really thought I was flowing with everything. I was over here working with the youth and having myself a you know really good time and, and living my best purpose for life. And then my whole world shakes up. And then it took me to a point of where I didn't want to do anything. I had just canceled all of that part of my life out. And, you know, no, I'm just, you know, I didn't even want to do hair. I was still in the midst of, you know, you know, switching things, you know, from a salon, being a salon owner. I just didn't want to do anything. And so from there, it required that I, it required that I level up my healing and step me to a, a space of really understanding um, where I was at in me and religion and spirituality. Um, I was church hurt because my church didn't respond the way that I felt that they should have. And then I started trying different things that I typically wouldn't have done because I needed something more to help me heal and to snap back into myself, especially because I was being told, hell no, you're not going to sit here and just sit in this shit. You got shit to do. Get up, get yourself together. Let's figure this out. And so I had Dianetics done. I uh, went and became an energy healer. All of these things started, you know, just started showing up. And then I'm researching and understanding and connecting to things that actually could help me to be my best now self. And then I just started using the mouth that they said, you know, was talking too much. And I started going live every day, just sharing my journey of journaling. I've journaled since I was a little girl back when we had diaries in the little um, locks on the, um, there really wasn't a good lock and your mama read all your shit anyway. And so I started journaling and, um, journaling more, um, sometimes doing video journals, um, a lot of that. And then as I continued to do that, I started to recognize, like, you know, I started to feel better. I started to go outside a whole lot more. And I was not a person who liked outside because I didn't like bugs. And so um, I started to go outside more. Um, Ray was definitely one who loved outside. So we would find ourselves in the strangest of places, fishing and all kinds of things. And it was really helping. And so one thing just continued to lead to another. Even though I wholeheartedly will always miss my brother and my friend, that, that just will never go away. I started to find um, a better understanding of how I could deal with my hurt or deal with my pain, um, deal with my issues, um, to not blame myself because I did go through a period of where I blamed me um, for um, what I felt like I could have done more to um, 
help him to not be caught in situations like that. And then to go to a place to realize that it wasn't for me to um, sort of fix everything. Um, being the oldest and sometimes having a lot of pressure. My, um, my mother worked a lot to make sure that we were provided for, but I took care of a lot of people um, in the sense of just growing up. And in my, in my opinion, I had a lot of responsibility. Um, and so it just sort of carried on into this part of my life. And now I still feel as though, I still feel as though I'm connected to a lot of people. Um, and now I'm better understanding how to allow that to sort of flow in who I am, who I am called to be in the next version of my best self. Do that make sense to anybody? Yep, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know Kimberly in the chat, she was like, um, she had said earlier, she was like, dang, you know, do we have the same mom? She said she's working through the same thing. Yeah, and, and I won't take anything away from her. I remember being really angry at my mom and being angry at, um, and at my dad, and I'm still working through. I realized I had more daddy issues than I had mommy issues, and that sort of connected to the men I was dating. Um, but my mother did the best that she could with what she, with what she had. Many of us grew up in, in families where a lot of things were swept under the rug, and they just did what they could with what they had. And so now understanding um, this, this I, I don't have as much anger or have as much bitterness. And sometimes when she doesn't respond how I want for her to respond, I, I, I have that understanding to know that she, you know, she just doesn't know how to do it. And her life just has not connected to um, um, it, it just, she, she never had this. Let me say this. I don't think she ever had this. And she didn't really have a, an amazing sisterhood to sort of be able to help her work through some parts of herself that she really needed to heal. Do she still have time? Hell yeah. I really do. I feel like she still has, has time to really fix some things within, you know, just within herself. Um, will everyone do that? No. I, I just, I just, I've just come to understand everybody's not going to take their healing into purpose journey. Do we need for people to actually make that connection? The world will be so much of a better place. It's just how I feel. But the truth of it all, you know, some of our children are going to grow up with issues. Um, and some of the people who we're connected to that just may not be in this journey, they're going to sort of die with their issues being untouched not unresolved, but just untouched. Some people are gonna keep their shit to themselves and leave out of here without having um, any relief to sort of letting some of those things go. Mm -hmm. um, Lee Lunny, I sort of see you You came in and said a couple of things. Is it something that you want to say? I, I can't read all of that, Chantel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if she wanna come off the mute. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where she is. I saw Shalyn say yeah, something. Yeah. There you go. I came in kind of, um, I didn't really know exactly what was going on, but I was looking at the chat and reading what everybody was saying. And I know Q was saying that she has a lot of daddy issues, her mm -hmm. father being in and out of prison. And my daddy being in and out of prison my entire life, um, it's crazy because I have less daddy issues than I have mommy issues. Like, even though my daddy was in prison, my daddy called me every day except for when he was on lockdown. My daddy always told me he was beautiful. I got a nose. I got, you know, different things um, because all I needed was to know those things. All I needed to do was hear that I was loved and my mom didn't know how to give that to me. She could give it to my sister, but she couldn't give it to me. And I realized now as an adult, that, you know, we hold on to those things. So, like, I hold on to everything that my daddy did when I was a child, and I hold on to everything that my mama did as a child. So now, as fucked up as my daddy is, it's like, I'm always making excuses for him, and I'm always, like, trying to go back to that little kid me, and I'm relearning that 
I got some daddy issues too, you know, and I like to put it all on my mama because of when I needed her the most, I feel like she wasn't there. And I feel like now it's harder for me to forgive her than it is for him. It, I don't know if I'm making sense, but it's the craziest shit when you realize like the little things that you wanted, just getting those make it to where I can band-aid all the fucked up shit that my daddy did or like see it. Um, I don't know. I'm learning though. I'm learning to hold them both accountable. I'm learning to hold myself accountable, not be mad at them because they only did what they knew. And I'm learning to, um, now as an adult, I'm able to check my daddy in certain situations. And our relationship is actually getting better. You know, he listens to me more. My mama is understanding that I'm my own woman and she can't make me do certain things. So it's just, it's all about growth. It's all about understanding this shit. I'm going to be a different parent than they ever could have been. Yeah, I, I see um, Rhonda says something too um, about it being disappointing that people can go through life and just not tap into these issues or the understanding. It is disappointing. But one of the things that I can wholeheartedly say that connects to, you know, just, you know, why this whole setup is here is understanding your purpose. What happens if we all show up in the sense of what we're being called to, or just, you know, just a few, you may be the one to help spark that, 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 that healing journey. You may be the one to actually just in a, in a simple conversation, especially right now, that may make a person look inwards and stop blaming, you know, like Lilani said, you know, I blame my mother for so much. Well, to start to see the bigger aspect and to see yourself. You know, I even had, I had to have the moment of, I, I can't keep blaming my mama or my daddy for shit. And I'm over here, you know, 30 plus years old. Like at some point in time, I have to take some responsibility and hold myself accountable to letting that go and really working and being at my best now self. I'm, I, I can't be my best 10 years self, but I can work at being my best now self with the resources and what I'm connected to. So, you know, for me to have a sisterhood of women that really, you know, in their, in their best ways hold me accountable because how I hold, you know, a person accountable, how Chantel holds a person accountable, how Michi holds a person accountable, how Sarah holds a person, a person accountable, even Mimi, it's totally different. And, but at the same time, I recognize when I'm being held accountable, I recognize when they are dropping something, you know, just, you know, so that I can choose to pick it up or if I can choose to leave it, you know, sitting there. Okay, well, Benicia, I really, how much do you really want to work and fix your shit? But a lot of us, you know, didn't grow up to have a lot of that from, in the sense of our parents. Our parents didn't have that. Me, I have been, um, I know Mimi is on here. Uh, Mimi has been my, my, my friend since, kindergarten and she can pretty much tell you that I've had this motherly energy about myself for a really long time and and it was because really honestly I grew up with a gift I couldn't talk about I didn't know how to say you know oh dang I know something that may happen that I don't know how to know to tell you about it and I don't want to say that I'm psychic or this that or other because people start making you feel weird about that kind of stuff and so I, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to deal with that. And I didn't have an outlet. And so for me, I just figured out first, first my way into making y'all try to do something different. And then that didn't always work. And so I, I grew up that way and not knowing how to channel that energy because someone never, you know, I didn't really have a lot of people around me to um, help me to understand that. And for many of us, that's that. Um, Destiny, I see you saying something. The group chat is going. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what? Um, it's one of the things I, I want to, uh, Jade said earlier, she said, my parents still disappoint me. Sometimes I imagine I had different parents because the pain can get so heavy. It put me in a low, low, low space. And I was actually um, responding to that because I'm like, you know, I agree sometimes being disappointed by my, I think some of us are still disappointed by our parents and usually disappointment comes because of expectation. You expect 
your parents to, okay, well, damn, you know, I'm 20 plus years old. You still shouldn't be doing the same shit to me at 40, 30, whatever years old that you did when I was five. Like, come on, mama, come on, daddy. You know, and I found sometimes even with myself, like my dad does, you know, the same shit. Like, and I'm just like, wow, daddy, okay, you know. Um, one thing Kimberly said, she said a lot of people, including our parents, didn't have anyone to show up for them. So they don't even know how to complete, you know, what you were talking about, Benicia, like they have absolutely no, um, no idea. Uh, she said she had both issues for different reasons. She's dealt with, um, her mom would call her the challenger because she would always speak her mind. Mm. And I'm like, wow, you know, just, you know, just thinking, just thinking about, you know, all of the things, you know, that what everyone is saying in the chat and it was. You, I wanted to, if you want to come off and mute, mute, because I did have a question. I got to go back to it. I was trying to, um, uh, one of the things she I said, she had jumped off real quick, um, to go to her family. Um, oh, she did. Okay. Cause yeah. she did say she had a lot to learn. She had to let a lot of her go. Cause that wasn't her mother's fault, but her father took the road that he took, you know what I'm saying? And I know at one point she said her dad was like Superman to her. So it's just, it's a lot, you know, dealing with our parents, you know, just something that we all have to contend with. But we know that um, when we let go of certain expectations, we really won't have to worry about being disappointed as much. Um, and then speaking our truth to, to our parents. Sometimes, you know, we can tell them something. Like, I know I'll tell my dad something. He'd be like, okay. And I'm like, daddy, you know, I need you to feel you know feel this feel where i'm coming from for him to like really really he's like oh like oh okay then he really understands so um leilani she just put that's crazy because my mom still tries to be for her dad about us and she's damn near 30. she said she had to check on her check check her on the fact that my child is not me and she would not do the same things with her if she wants to continue to spend time with my child Ooh, that's a lot that's yeah, Leilani, that, that's, that's conversation. Yeah. I had that conversation with my mama too. She didn't do it with my oldest son, but she she tried to do that with with my uh, with my middle son. But in all of this comes back to in every in all of what I was hearing, everyone saying the connection that I'm getting from everything is what happens when you show up. You know what happens when you show up. Um, what happens if you actually, um, you make the decision to be at the best version of yourself? Because for our parents and especially for those of us who are really closely connected, you are the person to drop the, um, you are the person to drop the seed. You are the person to, you know, be the energy that our parents needed to be around to actually have gotten it, you know, in their 30s or in their 20s or in their 40s, instead of now being 50 and 60 or, you know, some of us 70, um, and they still haven't, um, they still are, and the issues are still the same issues. But what happens when you actually take a moment to say, hey, dang, you know, this is what, in, in all of that that I've learned in, in my past, the things that have shown up how do I connect that to the best portion of myself and actually heal through that and let people not only just, just see it, but to feel it and that energy to spread out. And then you'll find people to, that will connect to you who are asking like, dang, you know, um, Leelani, what did you do? Like, how did you get here? Shannon, like, how did you finally let go of, of making, you know, your family so much of, of your responsibility what how did that what did that look like for you how did you how did you truly start healing the little girl within Chantel like what what was that journey like what parts you know what did you do to just spark it and when you start to understand that the purpose part starts to click in a whole lot and in Mandisa and, and look, Mandisa said, woo, my grain is still spreading toxicity at 84 camouflage just being real. As I said earlier, some people are going to leave this world with their shit. 
And Jade, Jade asks a good question. She says, how can we let go of the expectations of our parents? Mm. Damn good question. Um, what would you say would go into that, Chantel? You know what? Honest, honestly, uh, one of the things that Leilani said, I can just really, she actually said it in the chat, um, is you're going to have to just know them for who they are in the moment that they are. And you can't, one of the things, I think I posted it or I even saw it, I'll say, you can't expect you from nobody else. You can only expect you from yourself. You can't expect you from your mom. You can't expect you from your dad. It's disappointing because that's what we expect. So the only way that we cannot expect those, have, the only way we cannot have those expectations from them is to really understand who they are in, in who they are. Like, for an example, if your homegirl, your best buddy lie a lot, you expect them to lie. You can't be pissed off or disappointed if they lie to you because they're a liar. Like, you really can't. And you would, you would be dumb if you expect them to tell you the truth all the time. So how do you remove that expectation? Meet them where they at. You like, I know, listen, we go in the gate. You know she lying. You know she had lie all the time. So you can't trip when she tell you when she tell you a lie, especially square to your face. It's the same for our parents. It's not just our parents, but our relationships in general. We can't expect us from them. We can't expect how we feel, how we think, and how we emote from other people. We have to just, hey, meet them where they at. And if yo daddy ain't shit, nigga, then you <laughs> you just got another. Yeah, my daddy ain't shit. Yeah. And, and 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 guess what? And be okay with the fact that they ain't it. So when they when your dad shows up as an ain't shit nigga, or your mama show up as being toxic, or if your 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 auntie is a narcissist, whatever, then when you know that that is who they are, then you can't put any other expectation on them to be anything more than who they are. And if you do that, yeah, and granted, I know we love our parents. I love my daddy, hey, I love my daddy to pieces. And yes, do I sometimes still get disappointed in him? Absolutely. Cause my daddy can tend to be one of them ancient niggas, like just straight up, that's why I said it. And so, and sometimes it's hurtful cause I want him to be more to me than what he really is. And it hurts. It, it hurts a lot. And like you, I'm the oldest of six. Especially when I see that he does more for my siblings than he does for me. And it does hurt. And so it's not like you can't do it. You just don't do it for me, which is hurtful. But when I had to square him up and ask him, he was like, he, and he tells me, he said, well, I know you can handle it. I know you got it. They think that a lot. You hear that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And so, so now I say, okay, certain expectations because my dad feels this way and truly thinks this about me, certain things I don't even ask. Mm. That way I don't have to worry about being disappointed. Don't set yourself up. Don't set yourself up, basically. I don't set myself up for that disappointment. I still love him and I love him how our relationship is, but I don't ask. I don't put anything extra on him because I've tried it and each time I know hurt is on the other side for me. I know for me um, is I started finding gratitude for who they are. I can focus all the time on what didn't happen, what they didn't give, but I didn't grow up. Um, I never saw my lights off. I, I didn't go without water. Um, I always had a uh, a safe and stable home to be in. My mother wasn't running in a bunch of men. She wasn't out here on drugs, you know. So for me, I had to reflect on, on the positive versus so much on the things that she didn't give me. And then have the empathy to understanding what she had to work with at the time. Um, my, my father was, um, my father paid child support. That was consistent. Um, in the sense of thinking about a lot of the things that, you know, other people had in two parent homes, because a lot of people, my, my dad had a whole nother family and my brothers and sisters will talk about their shit 
And I and I say, hey, I'm glad I didn't grow up in the house with, with your mama and my daddy, you know, because there was a lot of stuff that was extremely toxic in that house. So I had to find gratitude for me for what, for who my mother was versus who she wasn't. And even more so, and then come back and find it, the gratitude for who my daddy was and who, instead of thinking about everything of who he isn't. And once I can flow in that, then I, I, I didn't find myself as angry as much. I didn't find myself as disappointed because my, my shit could have looked totally different. And I don't know who that would have shaped me into being at that time. If my mother was running me in and out the house, you know, you know, could that mean that I would have been, you know, molested or raped for years and years and years at a time, like some people may have experienced. You know, the fact that my mother wasn't a clubber, you know, she wasn't gone all of the time in the sense of doing nothing. She was gone and she was working. And even still, um, she worked to better so much as her, of herself to be able to give us a stronger foundation. I had to find gratitude. And I think sometimes if we, we forget about that so that we don't reflect so much on the bad, what about the good? So that was that was for me. Um, we got we're gonna take one more before we start getting into the other part. You want to read us something else, Chantel? From me? Yeah, uh, Jade. She says in relation to my purpose, my mom is so discouraging when it comes to my passion. She's very. Uh, oops, we're not. We're in the way. Hold on. She's very um, belittling, and I have to battle with myself because I have been seeking the approval since a child. I mentioned using herbs for a toothache, and she says, you and them damn herbs take your ass to the dentist for some medication. I shut down, and I still use my herbs, and I wrote that down in my journal to motivate me to learn more about herbs. I mean, I would like to ask Jade, like, why, what is it about the, the little girl within you that wants her mother's approval? Yeah. Um, I think because I never got it, um, you know, all my life, it was more of an expectation for me to be a particular way. And because I've always been different than what was expected of me, um, I've always tried to embrace my own uniqueness, but it was like, my mom was like, well, you, you need to do this this way. You need to uh, go to college, get your degree, you know, structured a particular way. And so um, I've always wanted to embrace, embrace my uniqueness. I like being different. And so I was always like, hey, mom, I'm doing this. Well, you're not doing this. So you, you're you not doing good enough. All right. So I tried to, you know, assimilate, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't conform to what was uh, being put before me because that's not who I am. And so ever since a child, I've always tried to prove that I am different and I like being different and I don't have to be like everybody else. And so I think that's where my uh, my sense of wanting that approval comes from. You, you want her to approve your, your difference? You being different. You want her to approve you being different. Is that Yeah, in some way like accept, accept me for being me and not continue to force me to be or try to try to force me to be something that I'm not. But if you really like being different and you like your, you know, your unique, your uniqueness, I, what is it about you that's still seeking the approval from mom? And, and I'm, I'm, I know and I recognize for the other people that are listening, I'm asking the same question because she really didn't answer it the first time. You tell, you tell me about it, but you're not telling me what is, I mean, just think, of, and you probably don't even need to answer it out loud right now. Maybe think about it, you know what happened when you were a little girl what is it about you that says i i'm just i need mommy's approval because if i get mommy's approval whoo, i'll be great i'll be able to do whatever or whatever the case may be what is it within you that's really that's why are you looking for her approval why do you need it and don't don't answer actually don't answer just think about it that that tells you hey i need i need mama's approval in order to move forward or i ain't gonna say move forward but i just need mama's approval um her acceptance her total acceptance because the thing about it is if you never get it then what that's deep 
because some of us will never get it in the in the sense of of this life you won't get it and and i have to say this on behalf of a lot of our mothers a lot of our mothers react to survival um and wanting to be whomever to to make sure that we had what we had in order to survive and sometimes they bring that on over into us so when they have these expectations of who we should be it goes back to to their 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 version of survival uh, my mother said <clears throat> she recently um sold well a few years ago she sold one of her houses and then she sold another house and she said the reason why she had held on to them for so long was because she never wanted to think about her children being homeless just like I, I just didn't want to think about my children being homeless and without you know a place to to live and so she kept the houses so if any of us needed somewhere to go that we would always have that space you know to to be able to come through come to so sometimes our parents look at who we are and and think more so of who we should be because they want to make sure that we're able to survive and survival for them look like what it looked like it maybe didn't look like you jay deciding to go and do something that was entrepreneurial maybe for them it looked like hey go get a job nine to five go to college get a degree live your life like this and when you decide that that's not what survival looks like for you, then, you know, for them, they're worried in the sense, will you be able to do it? Because a lot of them had those same desires, but they were so focused on making sure that they survive so that we could survive, they sacrificed those parts of, our, of themselves. And so then when you're going through it and it don't always look like this perfect pan out of perfection and you know no problems and things of that sort they start to get scared and you know don't have children because now they scared for you and their grandchildren of whether or not you'll be able to live and so it becomes mm -hmm. an issue for them of um going back to survival the root chakra work that they just maybe didn't do within themselves or having that faith that they could do something besides what they were told to do in order to provide and be what was at that time the best version of a mother. I, I just noticed that. Um, I have something to say okay. about that. Um, my father was not accepting of my life since I turned... 27 and that's when i met my husband he didn't like well that's when we got married and my father didn't like him and i became a muslim and he didn't like that because he felt like i was gonna go to hell we had a big knockout drag out fight and um but i was sure about what i wanted to do so it didn't matter what he thought and so at that time, you know, I, I stood my ground and I held on to my beliefs until he passed. And it wasn't until he passed that um, on his deathbed actually was when um, he came to me and he told me how he felt. And like, since you could be waiting on her to want you to love you to do can y'all hear me yes yeah we can oh, okay my phone my phone keep going in and out but um since you could wait and wait and wait for that approval and it'll never come or like i said my dad was on his deathbed and that's when he told me he understood you know the natural path that i was going and that he wished he would have done it. I just noticed that all of the things that I had been telling him for 10 years, he started doing them. So you just stay steadfast in what you're doing. And she's looking, but she doesn't see the end. She doesn't see how you'll be able to survive, how you'll be able to make it. Because that was his whole thing. He was like, you having another baby? So it's like you're seeking their approval, but why? if you're doing what you feel like you should be doing. 
if you feel like what's good for you and your family, because that's what they did. They did like they did what they felt was good for their family. So like my dad was truly like probably a week from dying. And he was like, I was jealous of your brother because he took all your mom's attention. I didn't feel like anybody was going to be good enough for you. So he was angry with me for being married, for having children, for having a life. And sis, let it go. Take care of you and your baby and move forward with what you know, because no matter what, they're looking at what you're doing. And they just trying to see what well, dang, how she gonna do it. And I promise you in the end, you will be victorious because you know what you said, you stayed steadfast to what it is that you were supposed to do. But waiting for that approval, it may never come. But knowing you will feel better knowing that you did what it felt like you was good, what was good for you to do. And um, you, that will make you feel even better. But let go of, of wanting to make them proud. Make yourself proud. Make your baby proud. That was really good, Sister Angela. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And she said that we're survival again. Um, and, and this in the sense of saying, I, I almost just started laughing when she said they're watching. My mom would be watching me like mud. You know, she won't, sometimes she won't ever say, girl, you doing good. I have invited them to jump on, not just my mom, but my family. They have, you know, they have not jumped on this online. You know, I knew they weren't going to jump on today because they probably at their church doing Easter Sunday, honey. And all the little In the parking lot. In the, in the now my mom she ain't leaving the house she on Zoom but she you know, she she definitely not <clears throat> she definitely has not tapped into a lot of this of where I'm at now um, which <clears throat> I had to be <clears throat> excuse me I had to be okay with that um, because it does not stop me it does not give me uh, I, I haven't been given the the hey Benicia no you don't do this and focus on just you and your mother. If I allow so much of that to affect me, then I wouldn't be where I am right now. And we wouldn't be on this call. And I, I can't think of my of living a life like that, of everything being around, you know, anyone's approval, anyone's approval of me. I just am doing what um connecting with one of the things, you know, where I thought about too when Substantial was saying obedience obedience will will guide you a really long a really 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 long way and to to get to that sometimes you got to get still and get clarity um something else that we just spoke on today so that you can know what exactly that means for you and and still have to deal with yourself in the process to still have to you know work on the healing within yourself and some of us it may take a little bit longer because we you know i think sister angela how long were you um in the nation of islam um this past february it would have been 20 years so i was actually active for 18 years 18 years that's a really long time and then to try to work through you know the healing parts of of, of, of all of that in life but can you can you say that thinking about all of this because you said a lot in that moment with your dad with your mom and 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 being a part of the nation of islam does it help connect to why you are why you are here and what's your purpose to do without a shadow of a doubt i know that being in the nation I learned a lot. Like, um, my father actually taught me how to cook. Like, my first couple of meals, my father taught me how to cook those meals. And so, like, he was my world. Like, I wouldn't have never thought of disappointing him at all. Mm -hmm. But once I felt like I had to have my own life, all of that went out the door because I knew it was my life. It was time for me to have, I was almost 30. I was like, it's time for me to have a life. And it just so happened to be with someone that was my best friend from childhood. And he became a Muslim. And that was just something I just couldn't help. 
but without a shadow of a doubt me being in the nation has taught me like it started my journey to um eating healthier um learning a lot of the skills that i have like the sewing and um even how to treat people because i was always the one that when new people came in i was the one that you know hospitality so to say i was the one that greeted people made them feel comfortable and because it was natural for me it was like when they saw me they was like okay this is what you're gonna do and so i have i have so many and that's where i got my opportunity to teach children without a degree and i have my students their parents even my students i've taught some of their children my old students and so it allowed me to build relationships that i still have to this day like when i joined the nation um i wasn't even a registered member and i was already teaching a class on my days off i worked at texas instruments during the day i mean at night and on my days off i would go to the school and i would teach and so uh, a lot of the skills that i have learned it was during my time that i was in the nation and so i can never say that you know it was a bad thing it was not but at some point um there was a point where i knew i had i had grown past what was there for me and i was okay with leaving so i and, and I, I only ask you that because i need for everyone today even in the sense of i know um a lot of you guys <clears throat> are talking about that little girl, you know, and going back to her. Um, have a moment of reflection of gratitude. Just have a moment of reflection of gratitude, even still, that you have been able to get past those parts just in the physical to right now. Some, some things that people went through and their little girl selves took them out. And you are still here in the moment don't allow those things to go through untapped or for you to just not make some kind of connection to what it means purpose-wise and to start connecting those those bridging those gaps of those things from then up until now and then to start creating something moving forward for you to continue that journey for you to continue in that space for you to continue in your healing for you to continue in, in, in your purpose and do it always, I, I keep saying it, at the best version of yourself. Okay, so that's that. How y'all feel? Good. Good. Rhonda, how you feel? Uh, oh, I'm good. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Go ahead. You, you have something? Were you saying something, Rhonda? I'm sorry. No, I just said I'm taking it all in and, and just applying it. Okay, definitely. Okay, so this is one of my... Um, I have a couple of them that I've been allowed to keep. And this is one from my very last retreat. It's mine. 729.19. Um, and this is her um, connecting her past to her present to her purpose. And so we're gonna do it like in a three part, we're gonna sort of do, I want you to do it in a three part section. I want you to think about the, the things and don't try to make it, you know, anything else. Um, one that I have and I don't, I'm looking on my wall. I've kept, I've kept um, some that people have allowed me to keep. I don't know why she let me keep this one. Some people want theirs. Um, I just ran into Leelani's um i think i have yours from that that one is mine's in your hand oh this one is yours mm -hmm. i thought this was yours but then i wondered if it if this a little l or in the corner oh that is an r i thought that was a c oh oh sugar plum i thought this was yours but i i wondered if it was jamaica's baby um so this was from you've been wanting this back too so i have <laughs> Um, so this is from, but I have some that are older and you, um, 
it doesn't have to look like this, but I mean, for you to be able to explain it, it could be something as, is it could be just something that's all lines. It can be, it's whatever that you're flowing through in the sense of thinking how your past has connected to your present and is connecting to your purpose. So just flow in it, which is why I said, hey, you got, do y'all have your headphones? Because, you know, I want you to just get into that energy of just vibing throughout the music, the tones, um, Different songs may register different things, different vibrations may bring up. We've had a really good conversation of, of past and, and present and purpose. And so I want you to think about that. Don't, don't think too hard. Um, art is whatever it is that you choose for it to be. And so even sometimes, you know, I have moments where I come through and I just may do this without, um, without it being you know it's just me and so um i have one that i'm working on now and you know i'm, I'm i can't wait it's actually i think it's really really good but i want for you guys to not get so caught up into because um if you think too much about it then i don't want y'all to be stressed um painting and drawing and just making lines i'm i'm a i'm a girl who love you know geometric lines and, and shapes and so that can be extremely therapeutic for you. And so it definitely can help now. These canvas but them, Dollar Tree is still open. You can find them at Dollar Tree. You don't even have to have a canvas. You can just use whatever that you have around. I let Nurad do this on um, a poster board um, about a week ago you know, with some paints outside and he just had a field day and it was a really beautiful creation um, for him. And so, um, and it doesn't cost much. Let me say it's really, Mendisa is so excited. <laughs> it doesn't cost much. You can literally spend about $4 and, um, and have, you know, use something that you can just sit here and do. And sometimes for hours, just vibe and listening to music you know, a couple of snacks outside, you know, whatever, and creating something beautiful that you'll be able to share with others, you know, and even later on in life to your children, you know, the moment you were in and what happened and and how that this whole session sort of help you to get through it. Um, so does everyone have what they need? Uh she said she ball out at Dollar Tree. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, everyone have what they need really quick. Uh, for those of you all who were not um, on in the very beginning, you only get three colors, three colors, three. For those of you all who are going to do this later, do not try to cheat. Do not try. Three colors. You choose what three colors you're going to use if you're going to use paint. <laughs> if you're going to use paint, you only get three brushes. That's it. We'll talk about that after we're done. It's going to be about a 15 minute assignment, maybe 20. Um, as um, K Wood sort of flows, vibes us out real quick. K Wood, so are you ready? Yes. Okay. Mandisa, that's okay. She's, my, she's not used to these limitations watch what how it's going to all come together. So um, for me, I just use this. Um, to put my three colors on, um, everything is disposable. My cup of water, um, like I said, you can use matte pencils, you can use markers. Only three, you guys, only three, only three. I prefer yeah. when we do this for us to use paint, but we're going to work with what we have so that it won't be, you know, so much of an issue. If you have earphones, this will be a time where you, and when you're done, I want for you guys to take pictures and tag, and tag me in it. Um, Send them to me, email, hashtag, whatever, so that I can be able to see these. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Indigo. Um, I'm sorry. Um, yes, so send it to me later. Um, I'm going to also, I'll upload this on YouTube too, so that you guys can go back and vibe with K Woods through this part. Um, trust me when I say, 
This is going to be really, really, really good. Okay, so everybody get your paints and stuff ready. Y'all got yourself together. And even if you don't have what you have right now, um, let me just say, do not miss um, this opportunity to just sort of vibe through the sounds of this young lady. Um, Kay Woods is an amazing, um, is an amazing individual on top of her voice, um, just as a little, just as a little girl. And I know it's a lot, um, just, she's much younger, but <clears throat> when I think about the purpose of her life, this young girl has, this baby has been singing. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know how long she's been singing probably all, all her life. But, um, I met her through my best friend, um, Mimi. And the first time I heard her sing as a little girl, it just made, I'm an emotional person anyway, but it just made me so emotional. And um, back then she was doing a whole bunch, of, you know how when little people, you little, you just be doing a bunch of runs and hey, hey, hey. and I felt every last one of them that she did. And so um, now just to see, to understand her purpose and how she has um, grew, I'm just grateful for her life. So thank you, Kay Woods. I appreciate you. And um, for those, do you have a cash app, Kay Woods? Uh, yes, it's Kay. It's my name, Karandria. <laughs> okay, so Mimi, can you put that inside of here? Because for those of y'all who would like to make a donation to her, she is a college student um, home early because of the quarantine and, and whatever. So, you know, if you just want to bless this little young person, um, tell us a little bit about yourself before we jump on, before we, oh, I knew she was going to do that. You don't have to tell us, much, tell us about what college you, you're in and just sort of give us, give us a little bit, you know, something while I'm getting my canvas and stuff together. Um, <clears throat> hi everyone. My name is Kurt Andrea. Um, well, okay with. <laughs> um, I go to Morgan State University, um, but I'm repping Howard right now. It's okay. Um, I'm a music major, vocal performance. Uh, it's in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, I'm 19. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to survive the quarantine being locked in the house. <laughs> Can you go through and find um, me some my paintbrushes? I'm sorry. She is somebody. I'm sorry. I wasn't on mute. I'm sorry. Are you done? Did you say all you needed to say? Yes, I did. <laughs> but if, I'm sorry. Y'all. Okay. And you ready? Yes. Oh, thank you. You got me all ready together. All right. What's y'all ready? Is everybody else ready? Because I'm ready. She's got me ready. All right, let's go. Okay. My thing is to these ways. I'm feeling it close. I can't hide no more. I can't hide. As the sun shines on all of my glory, my flaws don't look so bad at all. What was I so afraid of? Every part of me is a vision of a portrait of Mona, a Mona Lisa. Every part of me is beautiful. And I finally see I'm a work of art, a masterpiece. Whoa, oh. Who is this I trust so long to find, filling my head with lies that I'm not good enough? And I heard something in my ear tell me I'm perfect now that I know the truth. Time to show and prove that every part of me is a vision of a portrait of Mona, of Mona Lisa. 
Every part of me is beautiful, and I finally see I'm a work of art, a masterpiece. Whoa. And now I see the pretty colors on my canvas. I'm a work of art, a Mona Lisa. I'll share my picture with the world. I'm not afraid to let it show anymore. Oh. Let my colors paint the sky. There is beauty in my And I can see it now. I believe it now. I can feel it now. Oh. 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 Of a portrait of Mona, a Mona Lisa. Every part of me is beautiful, and I finally see I'm worth the love. I'm a masterpiece. Your smile, your voice creeps inside my heart with everything you do. I have no choice. Loving you is all that I know how to do. Even when your heart was heavy and you were still holding me up, even when you were in pieces, you would hold me together. Even though I was your baby, you always saw the fight in me. No one was there to hold my back. Don't you know that I took you over everybody else? When you're not around, I'm just bad for my health. I'm not on my own, but with you, I'm something else. You're telling me to choose out, but I already choose you. I choose you, you, I choose you, you. They say it's choosing season, finally I've got my reason, yeah, and I own you. I choose you, you, everybody needs someone to hold it down. I choose you, and your soul breathes inside my body like a cloud of smoke. I should have known that you stay in my system everywhere you go. Even when your heart was heavy and you were still holding me up. Even when you were in pieces, you would hold me together. Even though I was your sister, you always saw the fight in me when no one's there to hold my back. Don't you know that I took you over everybody else? When I'm not around, it's just bad for my health. I'm not on my own, but with you, I'm something else. It's telling me to choose up, but I already choose you. I choose you, you. I choose you, you. They say you choose and see this finally. I've got no reason, yeah, and I want you. I choose you, you. Everybody needs someone to hold it down. I choose you. (laughs) 
Tragedies are a commonplace. All the kinds of diseases people are slipping away. Economy's down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, yeah, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah, yeah. Folks without homes are living out in the streets. The drug habits, some say they just can't be. Mothers and robbers, no place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah. It could have been me. No food, yeah, and no clothes. No, yeah, all left alone, yeah, without a friend. I'm just another number with a tragic ease. But I want to thank God for letting all these things be, yeah. And every day for your power, you keep on, keep on keeping me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me, yeah, yeah. yeah. It could have been me, yeah. With no food and no clothes, yeah, yeah, all left alone, yeah, without a friend, and just another number with a tragic gift. And I want to thank God for letting all of these things be, and every day for your power, you keep on. Keep on keeping me, and I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you for your power. Thank you for protection every hour. I wanna thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for protection every hour. I wanna thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for protection every hour. I wanna thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for protection every hour. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I want to thank you for your love, thank you for your power, thank you for protection every hour. I want to thank you for your love, thank you for your power, thank you for protection every hour. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Oh, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. 
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Done what? Yes, that's all I got in me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was good. Um, I know many of us are going to continue to finish these out, but is there anyone who wants to sort of show how you started and sort of what direction you're going into? Um, What'd you say? I said I will. Okay. I'm just the way I look You don't have your um we don't have your witch call on. We can't see your face. I just turned it on. Okay, cool. I'll I'll give y'all a disclaimer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um my pain side. Okay, can you tell us what colors you chose first, too? I'm sorry. I chose uh, blue, purple, and pink. Okay. Kind of Easter vibes going on over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, when I was a kid, uh, well, my, he still got the tattoo, but my daddy had this tattoo, right? And um, it's crazy because when we do these, I just kind of do whatever pops into my head. I don't really put too much thought into it. I start with whatever pops into my head and I go from there. And it's crazy because when I got done, I thought about it. My father had this tattoo and it was a, <clears throat> a rose with three hearts in it. And the rose had my brother's name and the three hearts had me and my sister's name. And at the top of it, like as we got a little bit older, he added more to the tattoo. And at the top, it had like this storm cloud and it was raining, it had like a thunder and all of this stuff. And he had a burning log at the bottom. And he was like, because his kids got a lot of storms in their life. Man, crazy. It's a little crazy, but it was, um, you know, it brought me back to this moment and us talking about, um, you know, parents and how they treated us and how they made us feel, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought it was crazy that the first thing that came into my mind was for me to draw this heart. And as I started drawing a heart, it was like a half heart. And then I like erased part of it. And um, I have a storm coming from my heart. It's like a storm cloud. And um, it's blood. It's like years of tears, years of things that kind of went into a, um, I guess a fiery lake. So like everything that hurt me everything that I wanted that I was looking for I was looking for love I was looking for acceptance I was really wanting that and it was hurting me more so inside so like instead of being bright and bubbly on the inside and loving myself I was breaking down it was real hard and then on my purpose side I took all that pain all that rain rain brings rainbows and plants and things like that and I'm the rose that grew from concrete y'all see my pretty little rose <laughs> and the sky it is um it's opening up for me so it's kind of like sky's the limit and my rose is kind of going into it um I have more to put into it but this is what I got so far 
I love it. Why did uh, why did you choose those? You said those were your Easter vibes, the reason why you chose those colors? No, they were actually, so I've been in here, you know, doing some stuff and I had some paint out and um, those were the three colors that were sitting on the table. And I thought that I had some other colors too and I could have went and found some other colors and I was like, no, I'm going to work with these. Usually I use colors that I can blend together and make something else. But these colors actually mixed together make the color that I already have. But um, I went with it. And it's um, kind of cool, like how purple and blue and pink together make purple. But purple and blue to get purple and pink together make this red that just kind of, um, I don't know, it, it made me think of like how bright colors together can make something dark but you can put some bright and some dark and it makes something even brighter so like even though we go through different things um when we try to be around people that just always put you know what i want to say yes men mm -hmm. it doesn't help us mm -hmm. it actually put us in a worse state than we started in mm -hmm. but when we have a little bit of dark and we put some light into it it can actually make something better out of the situation that's just what came into my mind just now but i think that's crazy yeah i like it <laughs> uh, when you finish it make sure you post it so we can see it um anybody else want to share theirs i'm finished i will oh go ahead Andrew. <clears throat> all right let me turn on my camera Hey everybody. Okay. okay. So can y'all see me? Mm -hmm. like this. Okay. So over here I have a broken heart and I have a road leading to the tree of life. And I don't know if you can see inside the tree is two hands that's opening up receiving life from the tree, from the universe, from the earth. And this broken side, the broken heart is a symbol of the road that started me on this journey, the road to where I am now and how me um, connecting to the earth, connecting just connecting to people that I felt like could help me. And um, the third eye, the sun coming into the third eye and then over here where I have three hearts connected and each heart is a different color, but in the middle, it connects all three of the colors. Mm. And so it's just a symbol of sisterhood, my journey, my connection to nature, the hurt and the pain and all of that coming together to me being able to uh heal so yeah that's part of love absolutely love that thank you thank sister you. angela i used to hate these <laughs> 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 but I really enjoy it and I appreciate it now. <laughs> oh, Chantel. Uh, I wrote on for mine. I was, ooh, sorry. Go back, back. So um, at the top, I have me, me, you, them, just as a little girl, it was always, you know, me, us. You know, I guess I should just wrote us. But at the beginning, um, oh, the colors I chose was kind of like Leilani, but I had purple, um, pink, and orange. Um, in the middle, there's some eyes kind of like looking and looking for family, growth, love, truth, divinity, um, my voice, and beauty. So just almost like a journey of searching for something. And then on the end, you have the sun. Um, rain and of course my orange grass <laughs> i guess it's kind of eastery too um and then me in the middle 
uh, under the rain, but the sun is shining. And to me, what it just represents is from where I started going through the process of looking for something and now being okay with the flow, regardless of what it looks like. Um, be it the sun is shining, being if it's rain or just, you know, sitting in the earth, just being okay with what it looks like, being okay with the flow. That was it. And cool. Love. Um, yeah, I'll put y'all colors that y'all chose to over on the side. I definitely want to talk about the connection of those. Um, I guess I'll share mine. Um, let's see if you guys can see it. So I chose the colors um, orange and green and red. And it started off um, here in the center uh, with the orange. And I thought about myself um, just being um a little girl and trying to find an outlet of how to be myself and i then came back over that with an um an intense red of really because i didn't really figure it out really started having um more intense uh, moments of trying to really understand what living outside of the box looked like and um and so the red sort of is showing, you know, how it's all around, how I was really trying to figure out how to live, how to get outside of the box. And so I, 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 I never could take myself out of it um, because it seemed like I just kept running into myself, really. Um, and then I came back to this bottom part and I combined the colors of orange. I combined all of the colors and got brown. And the brown and the green representing the tree um, of wisdom. Wisdom really connecting within myself um, and abundance and how I am all of these components. But uh, when I finish it, it will reflect how even still with trying to figure so much of myself out and feeling like I was trapped in and never really able to be me from the thoughts and perceptions of others of who I needed to be, or just as a young girl, um, you know, being too boisterous or being, you know, too loud. Um, it will start to be a reflection of how I became sort of like this tree. And I sort of understood, um, and I, or I'm understanding how um, who I am will always be. And even, you know, when this part of myself is long and gone, I still will be here. And because of the grounding, I will always sort of be connected to the abundance and the, the gift of life. Um, yeah, I'm still going with it. And I'm going to still finish some things out. And um, the strong lines is like that strong. That was like when I was really trying to trying to be that. And the still around that, the little part, the little bitty, whatever, that's like the, the smaller parts of myself. I was still around trying to figure it out, you know, just so it's just, and I was doing whatever to try to figure it out. So that's how the lines and things are sort of, flowing throughout my page. I mean, flowing throughout this painting because I was really trying to come outside of living in the box of other people's perception. So that's me. Um, anybody else want to share theirs? I see um, a lot I'll of... Sh Go ahead. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. I'll share my... <clears throat> okay, come on. Hey. Okay. Hello. This is what I drew. Okay. I picked red, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. Um, immediately upon her voice, I just the the word love popped in my head. So mm. um, that's why I drew a heart, a red heart. And 
um, you know, wrote out the word love. Um, I did use these three colors I was just drawn to. I have a collection of colors. I actually was excited about this. I went and bought me a lot of paint. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I chose just three colors and three brushes. And those are the three that stood out to me. And I, the messages I just received, you know, um, is that at the end of the day, that's, this is what it all goes back to love. Um, I don't, it doesn't matter if it's self-love or, you know, just love for others. I know that's something that I struggle with, um, mm -hmm. with, well, self-love, uh, on some different levels. Uh, mm -hmm. not to the point where I hate myself, but, you know, I just got work in that area that I need to do. And so I just took these colors to me, you know, you have a swirl of all these different things going on. They could be tied to the chakras if you, um, if you want to look at it from that angle, as far as areas that I need to really focus on to get to this whole total loving of self inside out. Yeah. Um, and so that's, this is my little artwork. I'm going to put it on the refrigerator. Come on, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Love, love is definitely the key. Um, yeah when we just really sit back and think about it, you know, love does a lot of, you know, love heals. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? We got room for about two more. I'll share mine. <laughs> okay. So you said two people. Okay, so Isatia and um, Rhonda, we'll go with y'all too, the last two. Let me see what you got, um, Rhonda. Oh. Oh, well, whoever's ready. Now you know. Uh -oh. <laughs> you say she can go <laughs> okay say so what you got let's see okay, okay um so who going look i'm gonna i'm gonna let you go okay <laughs> <laughs> okay okay can y'all see not yet okay okay Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, I can't see. Okay, now we okay. can see. Okay, so at the bottom here is a beautiful flower, which I think we're all born perfect and the way that we're supposed to be. And then there's a vine going up to a fire that is also kind of grabbing around the fire too. And those are those are things that we go through as people that, like you say, could take us out. Mm -hmm. And even like the vine going through the fire, the, the leaves are no longer there. But it's mm -hmm. the tools that we use to bring us out. And you see the leaves are starting to grow on that vine again. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm drawn to plants, which is my purpose. Um, and it just shows that we, you know, even with us going through things, we always have what we need to pull us out. That's real. I love that. I love that. Yet. <laughs> I love That's it. it. Okay. Let's keep working on it. I can't wait to see how y'all are going to finish it. Um, Eustacia, what you got? Okay, the colors I picked were um blue yellow <coughs> and green i don't know if y'all can see it can y'all see it mm. not really mm -mm. A, mm. a little bit okay tell us about what you got though okay so um i drew a cloud in this it has rain coming from that cloud and I drew the sun behind the cloud, like you can see it a little bit, but it's not all the way, but there's no grass at the bottom. Basically because um, I don't allow my light to shine in order for me to grow. And I never knew how, <laughs> but now at this very moment, I'm learning to find balance. And on this side, you can see the full sun and there's a cloud, but there is no rain, but you can also see grass and flowers growing. So I'm just learning to find balance and learning how to live in this present moment so that I can grow. I love that. Good job, Isaiah. Um, 
I'm gonna take one more. One more. Let's see. Who who got one more? One more, one more. Mandisa, look like you got a little helper back there. Um, I'll share Anisha. Okay, come on, Vanessa. Hey. Hey. Okay, let's see. Okay. Can you see? Mm-hmm. Okay, so um the first part of it just kind of represents um a lot of darkness and anger mm -hmm. um that I was in, a phase that I was in. And the middle part is representing just a heartbreak and still trying to, you know, fight through it. Um the red is I the colors I chose were um red, blue, and black. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the black is just kind of that, that darkness mixed with a little red and the blue is kind of like um, kind of washed away that anger and um, that, you know, that, that hurt in the middle is representing that hurt, um, but more of the blue is coming through, um, through the red. And then the last part of it is just transitioning from the anger part into the blue. So I'm, you know, solid on trying to, you know, flush away um, all that anger. Um, but at the same time, the heart is half of a heart or a quarter, three quarters of a heart um, because I'm trying to just fill it back in and fill it back in with love. Mm. It's no longer any more anger. That's good. That's really, really good. I like that. How y'all feel? Is it not relaxing um, to just sort of have a moment? How you feel, Kareen? I see you still vibing. You and Mandisa over there just still going in. How you feel, Karina? I'm good. I'm just trying to finish. Yeah. I paint all the time with my kids, so. Mm -hmm. just kind yeah. of You'll have, um, you, you know, definitely I do suggest that we do this with our little people in the house um, because it, oh, let's see what you got. Show, you want to show us so far? Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. can you see? Okay. So um, the, sir, okay, so it's like a light blue, a green, and a purple. Okay. A blue circle on top. The singular mm -hmm. one would represent, um, like, me as a kid. I was super innocent. I was very sheltered. Mm -hmm. And then I have seven green circles. Um, basically, you're born innocent, and then shit happens. Mm. That's what all this mess is in the middle, and it kind of separates you. And it's green because it has to do a lot with um, affecting my heart chakra, and the heart chakra is green. And then I just learned to gather all that up, use it, and put myself together, which is the bottom. The bottom has all the colors. So basically, I learned from not everything, but I try to learn from everything that happened to me. And I do this all the colors at the bottom, which is um, the C. All of my love messages. Yeah. The seed of life that can continue, continue, become a flower of life, the tree of life, wherever. That's beautiful. Thank you. I love it. I can't wait to see what you're going to finish it with. I definitely can tell everybody's a lot less, uh, we're, we're really relaxed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are really relaxed, and I think today is a um, really good day to just sort of embrace that um, energy. Um, Kian, um, Kay Woods, you did really amazing. I don't know if she's still on, um, how did y'all enjoy the, um, the music to the session? Her voice is amazing. Oh yeah. She has a beautiful voice. Yeah. And this is, this is really, um, if y'all go and follow her page, um, she doesn't, I, I noticed she doesn't really post a, and she doesn't really post a lot because I had to try to find some. Honestly, this is really not a representation um, of really her voice. Um, I did, what was the last thing that we did, Mimi, where Kay Woods, um, Love Jones. I did Love Jones <clears throat> back in, 
I was, I think I was pregnant with Nura. It was the last time that I did it. And it was poetry and um, live music and her and, yeah, at Pan African, her and um, Dana, Dana Harper, um, just sort of vibed out to, um, you know, just some sounds or whatever. And we just sort of just had us a really healing moment. And the reason why I tell you guys, I mean, you know, I said, you know, say, hey, grab your, your headphones is to sort of minimize the distraction. Um, so if you guys would just continue that in the sense of completing, it will really allow for you to make a really, really strong connection to your highest self and start to really flow in your art and for you to really release and have that therapeutic moment that you really, really, really need. Uh, I wanted to be outside today when I did this, but of course the rain jacked me up from going outside and sitting out there. And, uh, and so I definitely um, would like to do this again <clears throat> when we're not having to deal with social distancing. Um, really quick. Um, let me give you guys information. Next week, um, Nikki is going to do um, some social distancing meditation in the park. And let me see if I can put this in here. Uh, and it's only limited. It's very, very limited. Um, it, she, we capped it, it. We capped it off. So people will be sort of everywhere. Um, we're going to do it with the mic and all of that. Um, and so definitely um, um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find what the link is. I'll post it and I have to come through here and, and post it inside of the group. Um, are, you, are you guys following this from the Eventbrite? I mean, not from the Eventbrite, but from the event page on um, Facebook, because I'm going to post it in there. I think she's only taking like 13 people. And we're going to mic it out, but definitely we're feeling the connection of needing to sort of be out, get some nature in and still practice social distancing. So, you know, we, we ain't gonna be able to hug and, and send love, but we'll definitely have to, um, we'll definitely have to, um, you know, wanna have a moment. So Nikki has agreed to it. Um, she hasn't posted the location. I think it's gonna stay private. Um, you get the ticket, it's there, it's just you, you show up and we'll sort of try to have those you know, randomly when spirit is um, is leading us. Um, so I'll post that in here. Kay Woods has her, um, has her cash app in here. Kay, we, this is her first year of college. And, you know, she didn't get to have the full first year experience. Amazing young lady, um, you know, amazing person just, you know, living her most purposeful life at the age of, you know, what are you, what does she mean? Is she still on her like 19? You know that she's young and, and fresh and vibrant. And so, you know, let's support her as much as we can, you know, anything, you know, would be of appreciation. Y'all can send it directly to her. Um, thank you all. There was something that I needed to, um, oh, um, still, please take the picture. Kay, what's how do you, what? I'm sorry. 19. Oh, excuse me. 19. I wish Kay Woods has a lot of, uh, really a lot of support in the sense of her gift and just, you know, being a young person. Um, some of the things that we wish, how you feel, Kay, Kay Woods, how, how, how you feel today? I know there was a lot to, to sit here and have to, to listen through. Did you, did you register to any of it? Yeah. Um, just listening to the the situations and like um, the relationships between parents is not really much different from what I'm I'm currently experiencing and still um, trying to work through. So it it kind of gave me a little bit of more clarity to know that I'm not the only one that's dealing with stuff like this. And um, 
to know that, I mean, though we get older, situations don't always change, but they get better. So I enjoyed it. I did. Okay. Look at that. Come on at 19, getting what you need. Um, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I am going to send out the email now, since I have all of the information from last week, I'll send that out to everybody so that you can have it. Please post it. Um, if nothing else is aura still on y'all keep aura lifted in prayer. She is definitely, um, and indigo too, still being one of, you know, being on the front line and Michi still having to be as an essential worker and honey because honey still has to be out there too uh, we appreciate you all and love and show much gratitude to um your gift and, and what you're being called to still have to do in this moment while some of us can be here sort of still you know some of you guys are still required to be out and we appreciate that um definitely um or are you still on I don't know if Aura is on. Aura is on. Anybody want to pray us out? Questions. I'm sorry. Questions. Anything that we're leaving out? I didn't ask. Anybody that's still an essential worker that somebody has to protection and love your way. Oh, uh, yeah, I know Alicia still has to go to work too. Alicia too. Yep. I'm sorry, Alicia. Go out and go to work. Yeah. You want to pray us on Natalie, Lonnie? Sure. Okay. I love you. Divine Spirit, we come to you today. First of all, thanking you for this day. Thank you for all of us being able to gather this together. Thank you for letting us be able to have peace after this. Thank you for letting us be able to have purpose. Thank you for letting us be able to be around others who recognize the things about ourselves that we can't recognize. All of the things that we felt like we needed at one point in life, you are putting things in order for us to feel them now. Thank you for choosing me, Marcus. This is me. Thank you. Letting us know that nothing is by chance, everything is divine in your order and in your time. I thank you for our ancestors being able to be with us along the way and helping us to be able to get through some of some things that broke other people. Mm. I thank you for each and every last one of the women on this call or men, I'm not sure, who need who are essential workers who have to go to work and have to be health care people who have to be able to go out and protect the streets, who have to be able to allow other people to go out and get the things that they need. I ask that you continue to protect them, help them in this time. In this time of chaos, let us continue to find peace and purpose. Let us be able to dive into our purpose. Let us be able to take this time and get the lessons that you have given to us to do. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for our healing. And thank you so much for love. We ask that you continue to be with us and continue to guide us. In your name we pray. Ashe. Ashe. Okay. That's it for me. Um, is that it? We done? No. Fuck that shit. Oh, God. Yes. Yes, I said. <laughs> I'm so I'm over here so relaxed. I feel like I I'm falling through this chair. I'm just like, dang, my body is so relaxed. Okay. Hey, I was in the middle of praying, damn near about to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so really quick, y'all know what it is. Um, K Woods, you may not know, but on the count of three, we have this tradition traditional chant that we scream out and do where we say fuck that shit three different three times and that's just to take on that energy and go into this new into this week with um that bold energy of just not giving a fuck and saying truly fuck that shit to some shit that wants to take you down mentally physically spiritually 
fuck that. We're not gonna, we're we not receiving none of that today, okay? So look, at K. K was like, wait a minute, what we gonna do? Yes, and let me just tell you, everybody does it. It's not, well, the little people, they don't do it, but the old people do it too. So if they can say fuck that shit, y'all can say fuck that shit, okay? Okay, count us down, Lee Lunny. All right, one, two, three, let's go. Fuck, fuck that, that shit. shit. Fuck that shit. In slow motion. Yes. Fuck the university. In slow motion, man. I love y'all. It's university. I'm telling you guys, it, it is an amazing thing. Please stay connected if you're interested in signing up. Get at me. You know, we a whole family over here. And we have been well. A whole family ain't that right, honey? Right. Yes. Fuck that right. shit for real. Okay. I love y'all. Have an amazing Sunday and an amazing week. Tomorrow. Oh, I forgot to tell you this. Tomorrow, I'm having a secret red lipstick lunch. And so um, tomorrow night, if you guys are interested in that, let me go ahead and put my email here okay um of course it'll have to be online because that's all that we can do at this time oh i'm sending something to Rhonda privately uh you know hold on Everyone. that's not right angela sent me all her messages today versus putting them in a group <laughs> I know that's what I was like. Why is it just sending it to her? So I uh, send love to everybody's pictures, so y'all know. Okay. <laughs> so I just sent that over. Um, I would absolutely love to have all of you guys there. Um, I totally um understand, you know, that a lot of us are, you know, being called to do many things. But tomorrow, um, I'm sending information out on that tonight as well. Um, and today I'm wearing my red lipstick, code red. Um, Tiffany Nash, of course, you guys, she's, that's, that's my girl, so it wouldn't be anything perfect, other than perfect, but to start off with, with her, so, 831 is a whole vibe, I love you guys, um, and I hope some of y'all tomorrow, if not, I'll, next Sunday, there will not be a next Sunday adult edition, we'll be doing the meditation in the park for those of you who sign up, if not, it is Team Sunday. Lee Lunny, Lee Lunny, Lee Lunny is handling that. The link is already up to get your ticket. Parents, do not intrude on their shit. Let them have it. Let them have a moment. They need this too. So you know, I need this too. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and obviously the parents need that too. They want to be able to, I guess, get away from the children for a little while. So if we can definitely um, let them have themselves in the kitchen they'll actually be able to make sunday dinner so that'll be perfect um the the email is going to go out too with all of the ingredients it is very simple they're going to just do some vegan nachos and some um and and an enchilada or something of that that sort which is what they have all sort of chosen something simple but at the same time She'll be talking about the healing benefits from herbs, um, specifically talking about cilantro um, and all of the healing properties of, of it. So um, everything is low cost and inexpensive. And so um, let's sort of spread that word out for them. Um, it's already set up as a link on my page. So if y'all could get the teens, they, they need something. These They were totally uprooted out of their environments just like we were. And we can't forget that they have shit that they're dealing with too. So let's let them have a moment. Um, Chantel, anything I'm leaving out? Nope, that's it. Okay, that's it. All yeah. right. Y'all have an amazing day. Love y'all, everybody. Love everybody. Take care. Right. Take care. Bye.